Here's the question that came in. In 23C, there is the new if exists, if not exists extensions to the create and drop commands. But the messages in the tools are the same, whether, say, a table was present or not. Is this a bug? This is coming in 23C, so or 23AI. So I thought I'd show you a little demo of it. Um, it's really designed about continuous integration, continuous deployment. But I'll show you a demo of what the feature is in case you haven't been uh, focusing very much on 23AI. And then we'll talk about uh, the ongoing discussion and debate that's going in the community about this particular feature. Here's the motivation for this particular feature. In the days of building applications where you deployed them once a year and you very carefully had your set of scripts and you ran them once in production, those days are gone. Nowadays, development, testing, and even in production, we have this thing, continuous integration, continuous deployment. We're running suites of scripts over and over and over. And in particular, in the area of things like, say, unit tests, we're often basically building up an environment, doing the test, tearing it down, and we run those same scripts over and over and again. So here's a sample of a very sophisticated unit test. It's dropping a table, creating the same table again, putting some values in, running a test, and then cleaning up. So that's a script we want to run over and over again. So this is the first time we run it. We drop the table because we've never seen this table before. We get table does not exist, but that's okay. We create the table, we run our insert, and then we start running our tests. And let's face it, unit tests are designed to fail if they find problems. That's why we have unit tests. So in this case, in this case, hypothetically, the unit test has failed and therefore we've crashed. Our unit test has crashed out. So we go in, do some diagnostics and we see what's going on and then we're ready to run our unit test again. The install log for that first run would look something like this. If I've spat it out to stand it out somewhere, I get the 942. Fine, I can ignore that because I don't care about the non-existence of the table. I create the table, insert a new value, ran my test and it died. Once I think I've fixed my code, my application code, I'm ready to run this unit test again. Second time I run it, I run the drop table command, clean up the mess, create my table, insert the row, and run my test. I still haven't fixed the bug, and so the unit test crashes again. But now, my install log is different. And this is the fundamental challenge when it comes to what I call acceptable errors. And we've been doing this as DBAs for years, that concept of you run a script and then you sort of look through it and you say, oh, yes, that Oracle error, that doesn't matter. Oh, but this one's a problem. That one doesn't matter, et cetera. We've had to do this sort of assessment of whether an error is a real error or something we could have ignored. And that's annoying, especially when it comes to the world of automation. You have this issue of, well, how many Aura 942s can I accept? And then we get this second problem, which is the install log here. Even though we had the exact same problem, I ran my unit test and it crashed, the install log here is different. It doesn't have the 942 anymore. If I was running these tests over and over again, and I'm doing a diff between the various logs, then once again, I've got complexity. I've got to have my automation tool know that, oh yes, I got some differences, but they're not really differences. All of that is a pain. So what do we do is in 23AI, we extended this to drop table if exists. And it's same with create if not exists, etc. The concept of if the table is there, go drop it. If the table is not there, then we don't report an error. We simply say table dropped again. So in this case now, I ran that, I run that, insert the value, I run my test. It doesn't matter. The installation logs or the unit test logs will always look the same because drop table if exists will always report the same thing. And then my, in this case, my test ran, it ran successfully, and then I can drop it, etc. If I keep running it, obviously you can see here that this table definitely doesn't exist here, definitely doesn't exist here, and definitely doesn't exist here. This is just to prove to you that even if the table is not there, we get the same message every single time table dropped. There's an alternative here. What if we didn't just have table dropped? Maybe we could have something like this. And, and these are fake. The, these aren't actually SQL statements. I've just, you know, I'm pausing for effect here. These are actually you know, hard-coded demos. So in this case, I could do, if the table exists, then we actually say table are dropped. And then I try again, it might give something like table did not exist, some different kind of message, etc. Or it could do something like this. Rather than table did not exist, which might be a bit, you know, sort of cryptic, you might do something like this. Drop table if exists t purge we could do command processed across all cases. In that way, we're still still preserving that intent that a log of this unit test would always have the same output. But some people get upset when they go, well, when you say table dropped, it wasn't really dropped because it wasn't really there. So we had this sort of debate. So this is an interesting debate. 
And on the on the database 23 AI forum, there's a lot of stuff going on. People say it should develop a better experience. It should come out like Postgres does. And then we replied, I think um, Gerald, the product manager said, well, the role of the avoid errors is to avoid non-existence checks. It's not about giving you feedback as to whether the table was there or not. If you wanted to do that, you would simply query the data dictionary. And then people say, oh, I, want a, you know, I want to change. They said, you know, I want create table statement process like the example I showed. Maybe we have command processed rather than table dropped, et cetera. And then we have this kind of thing is like, you know, someone replied saying, no, no, that's not with on. If not exists, there's a no up, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the definition is we successfully dropped any tables that were there that you requested us to do. The whole point of having a different outcome is user doesn't care, et cetera, et cetera. So this is going back and forth. As it currently stands, it is as I showed in the demo. We always say table dropped, whether you do drop table and it's there or it's not, we say table dropped. But there's this ongoing debate. So it may change in future, it may not. It's sort of in a state of flux. Ultimately, I think it's going to be a tools decision as opposed to a database decision. For me, I would like to have a tool, like for example, SQL CL, VS Code, SQL Developer, et cetera, the tools where you could maybe set a flag saying, I want some sort of feedback if a table drop command successfully dropped nothing, so to speak. So, so the tool itself would have maybe some facilities where you could choose what kind of feedback you get. We already have that in SQL Plus, not for this particular scenario, but you've probably seen if you've ever used SQL Plus now in the new 23 AI, you can actually choose the level of errors you get. You can just get the typical error code back, or you can get the error code plus some diagnostics, or you can get the error code plus a link to one of our error message websites. There's various levels of error reporting now you can get back from SQL Plus, and I think SQL CL has the same. Ultimately, I think this won't be a database call. I think it'll be a tool decision as to how they're going to interpret this. But just to let you know, as it currently stands, it's not deemed a bug. It's simply deemed the fact that we will always say table dropped, whether the table existed or not. And the same holds true for the logical opposite, which is if we create a table and we say create if not exists, if the table is already there, we will simply say table created. So be aware of that when it comes to building your scripts for 23AI.